Would you go to college if there was a 74% chance that you would leave with more debt and no degree? Of course not, but currently there are over a million people making that decision because they are enrolled in for-profit colleges. For-profits are colleges that exist primarily to make money. They're not non-profits and they're not state schools. You've probably heard of a couple of them like University of Phoenix, Capella University, DeVry University. On this channel, I believe in helping you get your college degree with as little time and money as possible and that means avoiding for-profit colleges, but don't take my word for it. Here are the seven big reasons that you need to avoid for-profits. The first is the most obvious and it's in the name. The goal of a for-profit college is profit. It's not about learning or the students or making the world a better place. If you go to a for-profit school, you will never be as important to them as your money is. And in a world that should be about learning and education and in a world where you have other options, that is a big problem. Maybe the most significant reason to avoid for-profits is their abysmal graduation rates. You go to college expecting to get a degree, and at most colleges, that's a fair assumption. At most colleges, the average graduation rate is 65%, but at for-profits, it's 26%, meaning that you are three times more likely to not get a degree from that school than you are to actually get a degree. Let's take University of Phoenix as an example. University of Phoenix has a 28% graduation rate, which remember is 2% higher than the average for-profit, but what you need to know is that a quarter of their students transfer to another school and about half just give up and quit school entirely. The numbers are even worse at other for-profits and that means that most people who go to for-profits don't graduate, spend too much money, end up with a bunch of debt, and don't get a degree. Since you started thinking about college, how many advertisements for colleges have you seen? If you're like me, and I'm like doing all this research into colleges and different things for these videos, then you have seen so many, and chances are really good that most of the ones you've seen are for for-profit schools like University of Phoenix or Capella or Grand Canyon. And that's because the marketing budget for these schools is insane. During the five-year period around 2012, University of Phoenix spent three billion dollars on advertising. And the other important thing to know is that their acceptance rate is 100 percent. That means they're spending a lot of money to get people in and then they don't turn anyone away, even if they're reasonably sure that that person will not succeed at their school. And why is that? It's because for-profits aren't advertising to people that they think are going to graduate from school. They're advertising to anybody and everybody that they think will sign up and pay money for at least a couple semesters of school. Accepting 100% of students may sound really cool and generous, but not having any kind of you know entrance standards or admissions requirements means that they're setting students up for failure because neither the students nor they know if graduating from the school is at all likely. Instead of helping students decide whether college is a good idea for them or whether this particular school is a good idea, places for profits like University of Phoenix and others are badgering students incessantly with ad after ad after ad, trying to get anyone at all to sign up for just a few classes at least. And why? Because it's not about the students, it's about the money. Incidentally, for profits are also very well known for spending more money on their advertising than other schools and spending less money on the quality of their classes. And that's why only 26% of for-profit students graduate. And if we look at the numbers even closer, it gets worse. The schools that usually treat students so terribly and leave them with more debt and no degree typically target low-income students priority. The national average of low-income students at college is about 45%, but at University of Phoenix, it's 73%, which is crazy because as we'll see in a second, most for-profits are more expensive than the average college. So basically, if you're seeing a bunch of ads for a college, go research whether it's for-profit, and if it is, just ignore it. At this point, you're probably wondering why so few people graduate from for-profit colleges. And part of that is the quality of the education. And one way to measure quality of education is the student to teacher ratio. At most colleges, 15 to 20 students per teacher is pretty good, but for-profits are not most colleges. DeVry has set 27 to one, Capella has 32 students to every teacher, 
American National University is 39 to 1, and University of Phoenix is 77 to 1. One professor cannot give the kind of adequate attention to students that they need to be able to do at for profits when they have this many students to take care of. That means less attention for you, busier professors, less feedback, and worse quality. Plus, most of these colleges use an army of part-time adjunct faculty, which means that they're paid less, and can mean that they're less motivated in teaching you. It's probably at least somewhat important to you to go to a college that has a good reputation, or at the very least, not a bad reputation. When people hear about your school, you don't want them to cringe and say, ooh, you went there? But with for-profit colleges, that's probably exactly what's gonna happen. These schools often have a bad reputation and it's for two main reasons. First, they're usually nationally accredited instead of regionally accredited. Regional accreditation is higher ranked than national accreditation and it's because they typically have higher standards for the colleges that they oversee. So these institutions that are saying, okay, this college is good to go, they have good classes, good professors, and they offer good degrees, a lot of them just won't work with for-profit colleges because for-profit colleges don't have good quality. So if your school is not regionally accredited, that's a bad sign. Second, culturally, there's a stigma that for-profit colleges are easy colleges to go to because they have this, this long associated history with diploma mills, which is essentially uh, an institution where you pay some money, do some busy work, and poof, you have a degree. Some for-profit colleges are like that, and some not-for-profit colleges are like that, but even if your for-profit college is really challenging, you're still gonna have to deal with that stigma. Another thing to consider is that typically because for-profits have worse reputations, it's a lot harder to transfer your credits from there to another school. So if you ever decide like, you know what, the school isn't so great, I wanna go somewhere else, there's a good chance that the other schools will say like, uh, we don't want these credits, you're gonna have to start from scratch. There was even an incident recently where it's this organization, this for-profit called Education Corporation of America declared bankruptcy and they had 20,000 students at their school but they declared bankruptcy and they were, you know, not so great. And so no other colleges would take these credits. And so these students and, you know, the, the school just disappeared. It evaporated. So now they couldn't get a degree and they couldn't transfer. And they just had a bunch of debt. A bad reputation means that going to a for-profit is not safe. For-profit students aren't just less likely to graduate, but if they do graduate, they on average make $6,000 less than their counterparts who go to other schools and they're 40% less likely to have a job three months after they graduate than other students. This is bad and it's something that these schools need to address, but it seems that they're not willing to talk about it. Go to one of these for-profit websites. Go and see if you can find anything about projected career outcomes based on past student data or projected earning amounts or anything like that. You won't find anything. They don't talk about their student's success because if they did, you would be less likely to go there. Okay, so all of this has been pretty bad, right? But if for-profits are so bad, essentially the Walmart or worse yet, the Kmart of online colleges, then they must be pretty inexpensive, right? You'd think so. On average, a for-profit online college costs $13,000 more than other colleges. Why would you pay more for something that's worse? After all of this, you're probably wondering what is good about a for-profit college? Like, why would somebody choose one of these schools? My theory is that the for-profits get students with their flashy and incessant advertising campaigns with stock photos of people who never went to the school doing jobs that may or may not actually have degrees represented at that school. And they just keep badgering them and badgering them. And the students don't know what to, you know, what questions to ask. They don't know what kind of stats to look up. They basically haven't watched the video you've just watched yet. But basically nobody ever told them to watch out. So spread the word, for-profit colleges are no good, and if you want my help picking the perfect college for you, set up a consultation with me using the description down below. I can help you save an average of $10,000 and two years of college in just a 45-minute session. Thank you for watching, and happy hacking.